I said I'm going live. <laughs> Where's my stool gone? Goodness me. No, I didn't swear. I said, goodness me. Hello, everybody. Oh, the stool didn't sound good. How are we all today? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm just getting my camera set up here. Making all this magic happen, seeing if I've got anybody hanging out and watching. I do have a couple of you here. Welcome back. It's our big brand Black Friday weekend Craft Alive event special and Today, I on nataliemay.com.au, we have got some fantastic specials, including 20% off of Vicky Booten, 20% off of Stencil Girl, 20% off Lindy's Gang products, plus 25% off of Natalie May scrapbooking products. So jump online and get, um, get some of that in your life. Uh, all of these items, these three items here are on special for today only, being Saturday the 26th of November. Um, and as part of this awesome weekend, I am going to do a little creating for you. I'm just opening up my, my new Dina Wakely Craft Journal. This is my new favourite journal to work in. And I'm just going to work on the first page today. Uh, and while I am talking, I'll just grab some gesso. Hello, Kathy. Kathy, I don't want to know that you're watching somebody else. How funny. Goodness me, you're here to watch me, babe. All right, so we have got some gesso here in my art journal. I am going to use my catalyst tool to swipe on a nice layer of, of, of gesso. So gesso is a sealer and an undercoat. It is excellent for sealing your backgrounds. And I'm wanting it. <laughs> I'm, I'm wanting it to be fairly loose and fairly rough, but fairly thick and swipey. I'm using the flat area of my catalyst tool here to get something really organic okay I have a bit of an idea what I'm going to do today uh, and I'm going to and I'm wanting to use my Lindy's but to do that I need to seal my card my background page of my art journal because we'll be adding lots of water and I don't want that water to seep all the way through so what the gesso is doing is sealing it now it's going on pretty thick here and pretty swipey and that is because that is the look I'm going for especially on the edges but what I will do is clean off my catalyst tool and just smooth some of this out speed up the drying time. Why is that all streaky? What's going on here? There we go. Get the fingers into it. I'm really after this, especially around these edges here. So I really do still want to continue to see some of this colour come through the background with this craft, but I'm wanting my gesso to be lovely and smooth. So that ought to do it. And it's putting down a white background as well. So I'm going to use my heat tool now to completely dry that off. Hello, Delphina. And this is going to take a moment to dry because you did see that I put on a decent amount of gesso. So I have two different sorts of gesso that I love to use. Um, two two favourite brands. One of them, or three favourite brands actually. We only stock two of my favourite brands. 
Uh, the Dina Wakeley Gesso is really, really nice. That is my current favorite to use. I also love to use the Chromacryl Impasto, or the Chromacryl Gesso. That's the other one I like to use. <laughs> oh, guaranteed, every time. Um, so yes, the Chromacryl is the other one I really love to use. But any of the brands that we have on nataliemace.com.au, if you type in the search engine for Gesso, all of the brands there I use quite regularly. All right, just making sure this is totally dry. I like to dry things from both sides of my page. Because we are working on paper and paper is porous and fibrous we like to make sure that it is dry all the way through so drying it from both sides speeds up that drying process and makes things a lot easier for you sorry about that sneeze guys always happens when i do a live facebook All right, so now I'm going to pop that aside and just slide it up out of the way and let it come back to room temperature. And then I will check and see if it is um, dry in a moment. All right, as part of this week of the special for today, we have got Lindy's Gang products on special as well. So I thought I would create a lovely bright background using my Lindy's Natalie May's Words of Wisdom. So this is the collection that I designed especially for Lindy's. Sorry, is that a focus there? Where's the focus? They're about there. So there you go. So this is um, mine, my collection. And what we do to open a packet of these when you get them for the first time and you can't just pull the lid off, pop your scissors in. Tilt your scissors up and pop it like it's hot. All right, I just need to just leave you with those to have a look at for just a moment and wait for my Link Ninja. And I'm just going to step out of the room and blow my nose because we all knew that was coming next after a good sneeze. Excuse me a moment. because you really don't need to hear me blowing my nose live on camera. That is not the best sound in the world, is it? Okay, so we have got some flat magicals. So flat magicals, of course, are exactly that. They have no shimmer. Good morning, Jennifer. How are you? It's not morning, darling, but I suppose it is in Western Australia, isn't it? So the flat magicals here, so magicals, are a product that Lindy's have created many, many years ago. Lindy's have been in business now for oh, 25 plus years. And the Magicals are a pigment dye-based powder. So the pigment means that they are full of colour. The dye means that they have an awesome permanency to them. The powder means that we just need to activate it to get the magic to happen. Now, like I said, these are the flat magicals, so these have no shimmer. You can also get sets with shimmer in them as well. Okay, uh, there's only a few sets available that are flat, and I was after a creating, I wanted to create a flat set of magicals simply because they uh i wanted something really lovely and punchy um and unfortunately we have i'm waiting for these to come in the nouveau spoons um they have been on back order um but jackie i do believe i've already got you in the book in the order book for them um so you can use anything at all i just like my little nouveau spoon but yes i do have some on order coming in so I'm using 
a generous amount here because I'm wanting a really punchy, bold color. The really awesome thing about Lindy's is that you can control the shade of your colors. So the colors that we are working with here is, it is what it is, yellow. Don't overthink it, orange. Trust the processed Trust the process red. Commit to it teal. Just be kind cobalt. So do they sound like colours that I've designed? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay, I also have here some fancy Adelaide water. And a pipette. Now, if you are purchasing Magicals, I highly recommend either purchasing a single pipette, you'll find those in the tools section, or you can get a pack of 10. And what I need to do is gently activate that powder. So I'm just putting a full pipette of water straight into here and activating that powder. And it's like jelly crystals, you have to get it to dissolve to get the, all of the magic to happen, okay? So there we go. Water away. And I'm going to stir all of these and swatch them before using them. And this is a really important part of the process with, with putting something on your page. And I did it in the last, the last video as well um, because what happens is when we swatch something, it gives us a bit of an idea, especially if we make it up like this, we need to make sure that we know what we are working with. Um, now, to get all of these colors, for the magic to happen with all of these colors, when, they, when we create the colors, we mix a whole heap of colors together to get them to work. And here is a really good example. To get this perfect shade of yellow, you have to mix together numerous other colors. So you can see in here, it looks really gross and muddy, but what's gonna happen is when I give it a stir and all of that pigment comes together, I now have the perfect shade of yellow. So let's give these a swatch. I've got a Dina Wakeley tag that I just had handy. Giving it a stir with my brush and I have a really lovely, bold, yellow happening here. Little rinse. I'm now gonna swatch the Don't Overthink It orange. And I love that orange, that's perfect. Trust the process red. Needs a bit more of a stir. Jelly crystals, got to dissolve it all. And I can't remember which blue this one was. I think this is the commit to a teal. Giving it a good stir. And just be kind cobalt. Yeah, look at that. So that's our colors there and I'm really happy with that. Um, and let's crack into it. Popping that off to the side, keeping my paper towel handy. All right. Now my page has got a little bit of a curl going on here and I don't want to curl. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm gonna go and get myself a little bulldog clip and clip that shut. I do have a bulldog clip holding my fringe back at the moment, but that's okay. And I just want to keep that nice and flat. Um, what I'm going to do is I've got a stamped image that I'm going to add over the top here, but I want my stamped image sitting on a rainbow of color. So I'm going to start with 
And I'm going to start with the yellow and I'm going to splodge it onto my page. Okay, and I'm not going to cover the whole, I'm not going to cover up all my white. I'm just wanting to splodge it on like that. And I've got a brush that is going to hold a bit of colour. And now I'm going to add some splatters up the top here. And hit that with the heat gun and dry it off. So that I get that lovely, rich, rich, rich colour before I add my orange. Ha. Kathy's, Kathy's just uh, commented, what weather is it? What season is it today? So we started off the day here in Adelaide with a beautiful 27 degrees and now it's raining. Love that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, half the time we're going to be watching paint dry today, so you're going to have to listen to me waffle. <coughs> oh, and have something stuck in my throat. Now, I really want to make sure that it's dry because I want the colours to layer over the top of each other and not blend in with each other. If they blend in, then it just becomes a bit of a, a bit of a mess. So I do want to ensure that the areas are, especially where the next colour is going to go, that area is completely and totally dry. If it's a little bit dry or wet at the top here where the splatters are, that won't matter too much. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And now I'm gonna go for the orange next because orange is the next color really that's on the color wheel and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna puddle that orange on pushing it up to the yellow. And now I'm just going to add a few little taps and splatters to layer and make it look pretty. But I don't want to do any brush strokes. Brush strokes can be a little bit boring. I'm wanting this to be a bit more effortless. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And I'm watching this drip over here. I've got a lovely big puddle here, but I don't want it to run into my spine because if I get too much liquid down the spine of my journal, it's gonna compromise the integrity of the stitch and my pages may come loose. And I really don't want that to happen. And I can go back and add more splatters after, which I certainly will do before I get some stamping on it. And I'm just wanting to dry this little puddle. So I love that Lindy's have this permanency about them. We are dyeing the surface. So this is that dye-based powder that we are working with, okay? The next color that I'm using is Trust the Process Red. Now I'm gonna go light on with the red. Red can quite often be a little bit too much. Uh, I don't want it to look like uh, something has bled out on the page. We don't need it to be a crime scene. So I'm going with a less is best and the same approach with the splatters. We don't need to overdo the blood splatters, but it's a really, really nice magenta red. Uh, and I designed that red in particular to be more of a pink based red. Uh, so that it didn't look like a, a crime scene. And I've got a bit of a bit of a run going on over here. So I'm directing the, sorry, and I know you can't see it. I'm directing the drip so it doesn't spread too far with the heat tool. Oh, very nice. 
then the next colour is going to be that really nice teal. Teal. And I'm going to make a new colour and add in a little bit of green on the edges as well. So let's get some of that teal. That commit to it teal. Is it this one? Yes. So I'm pushing it up to the red without getting too much into the red. It's going to layer over the top, pushing it up to that line, pushing it up to that line. Up here. And then to help with the blend, I'm going to add some splatters. And then I'm going to take some of this yellow and put over into this little well and some of this teal and I'm going to make green and I'm going to push some green just on the edges. But I've got to be careful with the green I've just created because if it touches the red that is still wet, I have suddenly got brown which is nowhere near as visually pleasing so I'm just going to quickly dry that off before it goes too muddy because I have got a little bit of brown going on there which doesn't please me and my page is a little curly so I'm just holding it down with my palette knife But I didn't put a green in this colour set simply because I knew that the um, the colours that we could make out of these almost primary colours would be would work a treat. We could make it happen because we have the power. Right, I'm going to make do some green splatters over there. There we go. And get some of this, no, wrong blue. This blue, which is the Just Be Kind Cobalt. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Pushing it up. Now I'm going to quickly dry that and then I'm going to go and add some splatters before adding some stamping to it. So welcome to those of you who are just tuning in. I see a new, a few new faces have just joined us. Um, lovely to see you all on this Saturday afternoon, uh, this weekend and every day or well, for the last two days. This is part of the live Facebook series that I am doing four live Facebooks a day. And this morning we had a bit of a coffee and a chat and a tour. And this afternoon we have got, I've got one more live Facebook mini class after this. I've also been doing a couple more little mini classes, which you can go back through my Facebook feed and watch. And you can also see those over on my YouTube channel. If you just look for Natalie May Scrapbooking on YouTube, I'm sure that you will stumble across me. Today we have got 20% off of Vicky Booten products, 20% off of Lindy's Gang products, products, which is what we're using today. Plus we have got 20% off of Stencil Girl, which is very awesome. A few more splatters. And 20% off of Vicky Booten as well. So I will be using a Vicky Booten stamp in a moment. And I'm going to be also using Natalie May scrapbooking stamp, which is something else that we have on special as well at 25% off for Natalie May scrapbooking products, which is something we don't ever, ever, ever do. 
do. So you can jump online and take advantage of that. Um, I'm just drying these little extra drips. You can see how they are sitting and sitting on top of each other really, really nicely. And I'll bring this up to camera in a minute so that you can have a bit of a close up look at how these puddles have dried. And I'm just gonna add a couple in teal and then in this lovely cobalt blue as well. And knowing when to stop is important, and that's about now. Um, so there we go. So as part of the special that we have going on this weekend as well, uh, we've got a brand new special that's happening tomorrow, which I'm looking forward to as well. And you will be able to enjoy that special and add to your order that you placed today. You only need to pay postage one time over the four days. All of the other orders that you decide that you want to place, you just select no judgment at the checkout and then we will put them all together for you and post on Monday and Tuesday. If you are a local crafter and you want to place an order and pick up, we welcome that. Your order will be ready from Wednesday onwards. It will not be ready until Wednesday so please um, don't pop in on Monday to pick up your order because it, we will not be open on Monday to the public as we check off everybody's orders and pick and pack and make that happen. Oh, so that's looking great. Let's have a look and bring it up to camera. So you can see how beautiful those colours look when you layer them up. They are bold, they are bright, they're punchy, they, they've got their own individual layers and personalities and that green that I made up there is sitting as well. And I'm really, really liking that. So what am I going to do with this page? I'm going to use a stamp. Now I have got these gorgeous girls from Art by Marlene. Um, Love, love, love this stamp. Now, Art by Marlene products will not be on special this weekend, so um, grab these while they're hot. This is a beautiful stamp, and these stamp so very well. Really, really nice. So I have pre-stamped a couple here, so just on plain cardstock. I don't know if you can see how crisp that is. I only stamped that once. I didn't have to go and do another layer. That is absolutely gorgeous. And then this is the other one that is on the set. Okay, um, really love that. And again, that's just one ink pass um, with the stamp and then same with the, um, the words there. But what I did is I stamped this girl here. This is the one that I wanted to use. Okay, I stamped her and is stamped beautifully. I then saved you watching the fussy cutting and I um, cut that. But what I also did is I extended her body. Okay, you can see how that works there. And I want to put her on my page down here. She could have been, she can still be extended longer actually. I might do that. I think she needs to sit up a little higher. So how do I do that? I'm going to cut off this bit of card. And I'm going to grab some double-sided tape. Oh. And pop that on the back. On the back like so. This is the super strong double-sided tape. This is awesome for mixed media projects. It's a very, very, very strong tape. Uh, and, and this tape is excellent if you make mini books as well. Bin. Where's my blade gone? Here we go. So I stamped it in black archival ink so that, 
I stamped it in black archival ink so that it can, uh, when I colour the image in a moment, it's not going to, hopefully it's not going to, well, it's not going to run. The stamped bit's not going to run. My pen area might run a little bit because I can't remember what pen that I used. But hey, there we go. She's going to sit there like that. Now, she has a bit of a join going here, so let's eliminate that by grabbing some washi tape. Um, I'm just trying to find a washi tape that's going to work perfectly. Bear with me just a second. You know when you have too many washi tapes to choose from? Yep, that. But I want to extend my image first with random pen. I might, I might not go with washi tape. I want to see how I go. Stamp over these, I'm not sure yet. I might doodle. I reckon that's about right. I'm definitely doodling now since I just did that. Okay, dokie. Okay. So that's what's going to go there. So before I do that, I'm going to pop her aside and I want to add some stamping to my background. I've got a variety of Natalie May scrapbooking stamps here. I've got quite a few different ones. I've got the good old trusty won't let you down stamp set, which you'll stamp, which is an individual one like that. I have got my blah, blah, blah stamps, which is one of my most well used. So I'm going to grab that. I'm also going to add in my Buds of May. Now this one is a hand-drawn stamp by myself. And I thought I might pop a little bit of a background there. And I also have some sweary words. And I'm going to use those. Um, but I might start with the... Buds of May. Now I'm just going to pop my, oh, magicals off to the side. Find my black ink pad. And have a bit of a stampy background here. Oh, yeah. So I'm not fussed about how much you can see and how much you can't see. What it is about is about creating a little bit of interest in the background to take your eye away and go, oh, what has she done there? That's the effect that we're going for, that little bit of, oh, what has she done there? That little bit of interest. Um, I'm just going to put some paper towel here so that I can stamp. Off to the side. So black archival uh, I'm going to I don't use a stamp block for this one but I'm going to pop it in like that because I'm not too fussed about it not completely showing. I might even put some blah, blah, blah over her skirt because she's going to go here. And I reckon, no, and again, it's that knowing when to stop. I'm 
I've put that away because I don't want to use that one. Um, I have got some of my sweary words here as well. Now, if you are sensitive to curse words, don't focus on these. Um, I have got a pack of 20 something very, very rude words in here. I'm not going to go for a word This, or well, a rude word. I'm going to go with nope and, and not that one. Oh, here we go. And this little one. Pop that aside. Pop that aside. And this one says, I offend most people. Oh, I was going to use a Vicky Burton one as well. I will too. So what I want to do with this is just slide in a few of these little stamps because they just create a little bit of interest. A little bit of, again, oh, what has she done there? Now, I bought out the sweary stamps a couple of years ago because nobody else had jumped in and decided to do something so bold. And that's what I wanted to do. Okay, popping that aside. Um, the Vicky Beaton stamp that we used in the live earlier today, I love this one here, so I thought I might use that before I colour my girl. So this is called the Love This Stamp Set. Busy background going on here, I know, but you're just going to need to trust me on it. Once she gets on, once we put her on the page... It'll be fine. Lining that up a little. And that ought to do it. So you can see that we're building a little bit of a story here. Okay. And again, Natalie, knowing when to stop, put the stamp away. Don't touch it again. And let's colour our girl. I want to show you a cool little trick that you can do with my, my magicals. My words of wisdom set. If you decide to invest in... Some glitzy magicals, you can take these and now make them shimmery. Because what we've got here... Hey, Lou, can you turn my fan on, please? I'm having a little hot flush moment. I turned it off thinking I didn't need it, but you know what? Apparently I do. So this is the glitzy. So these are just straight glitz with no colour. So what that means is that you can add a rose gold shimmer to your magicals. Or a copper, a showstopper copper, a ritzy rose gold, a scintillating silver, a snazzy sparkle or a glitzy gold. I'm going to go with the snazzy sparkle today. And I am going to, and I'm not going to mix it in here. I'm going to grab a puddle and mix it on my mat. Um, and I'm just thinking, what colours am I going to do? I'm going to start with red. And I've made a puddle. I'm going to grab a little bit of this silver and mix it up. And now I have this gorgeous new colour. Not so clean paint water, but that's okay. Let's commit to it. And we're going to we're going to test it first. I'll test it down the bottom. And I like it. So I'm just going to let that 
cuddle. Do you want water? Um, no, let's use the dirty paint water. She'll be right. Sure. Or maybe just empty that one. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm going to take the orange, make a puddle, grab some of that. Oh, yeah. And now I've got some shimmer here as well. Okay. Very nice. And a little of the yellow. Oh, now we've got some shimmer and I'll test it because I know that the, I don't see this bit here. Rightio, let's get in here and do this. I'm going to grab a bit more yellow. And I'm going to colour in here. Like so. Tabo. Orange, I'm going to push the orange up exactly the same, but I'm letting them kind of blend in together this time. There we go, a bit more orange. And now a bit more darker red. Oh, yeah. And I'm pushing that red onto that orange and blurring that line. Okay, what I want to do now is I've got a clean brush that's not sopping wet and I'm just going to sop up some of these puddles and work on a little bit of a blend. Do with a little bit more yellow up in here and whoops, and apparently down there. And I can now intensify these by popping a little bit more red over the top down the bottom there. So you can see we've gone from yellow through to orange, through to pinky sort of color through to red. I'm just gonna grab some more yellow. Oh look, and knowing when to stop is important. Somebody tell me to stop because I could do this all day. All day. And now I'm gonna heat set it before I mess it up. So now I've taken my flat magicals that have no shimmer at all and I have given them a shimmer. Now I have that line there, I don't love it. So in a moment, I'm gonna grab some black cotton and I'm gonna wrap some cotton around her dress. And I'm saying that out loud so that I remember. Ta -da. Come on. All right, see that shimmer? She's a bit pretty. Okay, she's also wearing a scarf. I'm gonna get a slightly thinner paintbrush and give her a scarf that resembles, oh, you're a champ, Lou. But you already knew that. Give her a ready pink scarf, a ready pinky orange scarf. The orange over the top. And thinking maybe a bit of yellow on that scarf too. Just dabbing it down a bit. Okay, skin tone. Mmm, didn't think this through, did I? What are we going to do? I don't really want to try and make a skin tone out of magicals. That's not going to float my boat. But what will float my boat? Oh, I suppose I could. Thinking, 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 thinking. How can I do it? Let's pull out my watercolours that I have, I've got right here. have been playing with them all weekend. 
and we're going to because I know that the skin tone works well for that and then I can do her hair as well so we've got a white here and we're going to make up our skin tone I'm going to zoom up a little bit just to try and make this a little bit easy for you to see okay a nice big juicy amount of white here and I am going for a Caucasian skin tone um, cap of water a little bit of orange and I'm just going to keep mixing around here until I get something I like oh then all of a sudden I've gone too far and I've got way too much in the way of red so I'm going to grab another paintbrush pull in some more white and just start having a bit of a play until I get So you can purchase numerous different things to give you an exact white skin tone. I haven't got, um, I have got some coloured pencils, some Prismacolor pencils that usually work quite well. But seeing that I've just made up this nice little puddle here, I'm just going to squeeze my paintbrush, get the drips out. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's test it down the bottom on the bit that I'm not going to see. Yeah, that works for me. Okay, a couple of things we need to do is work quickly and effectively. We are, I'm not working with watercolours, watercolour paper here. I'm just working with oops, normal card. So I, I need to I need to be confident with what I'm doing before this, you know, it soaks in and I can't change it. So because if we were working on watercolour paper, it, you know, we've got a little bit of room to move. But because this is not watercolour paper, it is the paper that I use just to make cards in, I need to work confidently. Okay, she's a little tanned. So I'm just going to take off a layer and tone that back a bit. And I'm happy with that. Uh, she needs a little bit of rosy rosy on her cheeks. I've just grabbed some of my magicals um, and that's going to be dangerous. So mix in a little bit of the magicals to make a pink. Look at that, that worked. And now I'm just going to dab this around the place. Now we are not going for a sunburnt look but a coral sifter is good for the skin. Correct. So the Coral Sifter, which is one of the new sifters that have just been released and were limited edition and have since sold out, they are also awesome um, for doing that. Um, but yeah, like I said, I tend to just use a, a Prismacolor pencil quite normally or make up my own little watercolors like we have done here today. And that tends to work quite well. I'm going to come back to those lips. Now with the eyes, I'm going to grab some of this. Actually, she can have green eyes. Oh. Beautiful. Nice and loose. I don't want, I'm not aiming for perfection here. I am leaving a little bit of a white um area around her eyes and i will zoom up in a moment and for her hair let's go with some brown watercolor and i might mix in a little bit of copper shimmer so this copper oh that's strong isn't it stronger than i thought it was going to be forgot how beautiful it is a tiny amount an epically tiny amount and because a little bit goes such a long way with this pigment so I've got some brown watercolour here and I'm mixing it in. Let's give it a test down the bottom. Oh yeah. Hmm. 
I'm going to grab some of that yellow and mix in because I can. Because hair isn't all one colour and we can mix it together. If we were painting my hair at the moment, we'd be doing a bit more grey. And I'm taking the excess off my brush into the paper towel. I find that the easiest way so then I can control what, how much liquid is on my brush. Um, and it's just all about having a bit of a play and just about knowledge. How am I going for time? What's the time? 2.20. Oh, crikey. Okay. Let's finish this up. Waffle, waffle. Let's go. We are done on that. I'm going to pop some double-sided tape on the back of her. I'm going to wrap that cotton. Let's bring her up here. She look right? Yeah, that works for me. Let's get that out of the way. Just gonna zoom out a bit, guys. Whoops, that's not out. Flip it over. So I helped to, to disguise that little join that I did when I extended her dress. Um, so to hide that, I'm gonna pop some double-sided tape. Uh, Lou has bought me some black thread. Oh, hang on. And I'm going to add some texture just by wrapping it, wrapping it. And I actually dropped a bit of skin tone on here, so I'm covering that up as well. Super sticky, ridiculous sticky. And I'm gonna pop a bit more on. Before we stick it down to the page, usually I would use something like an adhesive, like a, a wet adhesive to stick this on. But since I've already started here with the tape, let's follow through. And a bit under her, actually I'll pop some glue under her noggin, let's do that. Under her face. So using the, where's my glue gone? Using the uh, Lindy's from the Words of Wisdom Lindy set, designed by me. And you can see here, this little bit here, that's where I cut her hand off when I was cutting it. Because, you know, not perfect. I'll peel the double-sided tape off that. Oh, back to my page. Okay. Pop her on. Pop her here. Stick, stick, stick. Wait for that glue to just catch. So this Art by Marlene sticky glue is the bomb. It is amazing to use. Very, very good. And it takes just a second to catch, for the glue to catch, which means, you know, you can take your finger off it. Um, really, really great product. It has become my go-to. I will trim that off across the bottom, of course. And as you can see, I could do with a little bit more red down here. So I'm just going to do that. And I just need to very quickly add a sentiment. And the sentiment that I'm going to use is... 
I do have some sweary words in there. I could have continued on that sort of tangent, but I'm going to go here with one of these. So this is out of my It's a Good Day stamp set, and I'm going to go with something, something simple like You Make Me Smile. Popping that on there. Test it on something. And stick it. Stick it, done. Don't overthink it. Happy days. Right, I love that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was really, really fun to do. And lovely and bright and screams color and happy and all of the things that we do love in our day. Um, so jump online to nataliemay.com.au and have a bit of a look. I'm gonna take a photograph of this um, and add it to add it to um, our Facebook page for you to have a bit of a look up close. You will find the process video on uh, YouTube. I will upload it to YouTube later today. Uh, I will see you back here in one hour for another live Facebook, which is the last one of Saturday at the moment. Uh, so I look forward to chatting with you soon. See you, see you, see you later, alligator.